Dear you, Floor, I had an installer redo my steps, kind of like the way you explained in your videos, but he didn't cut the stair nose off. I want them cut off. Is there anything I can do now after the fact? Any help would be greatly appreciated. I've included pics. Oh my goodness. Hello DIY Nation and welcome back to UFloor, the channel dedicated to bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. And today we're going to be going over something that has never really crossed my path in my line of this work or not. Uh, somebody had hired a guy to come in and redo their steps, but he didn't cut the stair nose off of it. So it, you could see it. Uh, as I've shown you in the pictures that she included with, I wasn't sure how to tackle this. So I went ahead and made this mock-up of a, of a set of steps like this. And I did it kind of the way that they did it in the pictures. So as you can see, here is the old step right there. And then they put the risers on, but they didn't cut the nose off. So you can still see the old step. And then here's the new step. Now in the pictures, the, the new step was black. And then I guess the, the step that was underneath was the, you know, the one inch treads they, they sell in the Home Depot. Kind of like the ones we did in the uh, videos, but they were more of this material right here. It was, you know, OSB. So the only way that I know to uh, take care of this project, I decided that I can't do this very often, but I would like to take some of the issues that you guys are commenting about or emailing me about and see if I can't tackle those situations to see if I can help you in any way possible. Now she said, I'm about to just cut these things off. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, that is something you can do, but let's go, let's talk about this for just a second. So this is what you're going to want to have to cut off. And now let me just go ahead and say it took me a couple hours to build this mock-up yesterday and I wanted to film the video yesterday but today I had to go to a job loaded up all the tools and when I said hey I'm gonna film that video tonight when I got back tonight I was like oh my goodness all the tools are in the truck so we're gonna try to explain this the best way possible without tools but I think we'll be able to get through it since you understand what I say because when I explained to her she was like you lost me at Sawzall so here's what I suggest doing you're gonna need to take a Sawzall and you're gonna need to cut these nose from underneath right here Okay, now I cut this nose off yesterday and nailed it back in so it would be easy to pull off and explain to you what I was trying to explain to her. You need to get up underneath and cut it with a Sawzall so that you can rip them off. Now, if you don't have enough room between here and here and with this mock-up, you probably definitely wouldn't. But most steps are right around 7 inches to 7 and 3 quarters inches. You definitely don't want to try to go higher than 8 because if you do, you're going to have to be picking your legs up. It's kind of like you're walking up a mountain. Very uncomfortable. The smaller the step, the better, but you definitely don't want to go below 6 and 3 quarters either because then you're running up a whole bunch of steps just like you would like at a park or something. So I don't have a hammer. I don't have a chisel. I don't have anything with me, but I have the things here needed to explain what it is I'm going to do. First of all, there's two ways to do this. You need to get underneath there with a Sawzall and cut this nose off from underneath. If you don't know what a Sawzall is, go look that up somewhere and, and maybe look at a video to see. It's a reciprocating saw is another name for it. It's just a saw that goes back and forth and you, you're able to get close. Now, if you use a Sawzall, the problem is this right here, the riser that is existing, you're probably going to chew that up a little bit. You're probably going to ding into the side of your skirt board over there. So stay close as you can to it because when you go to cutting on this up here, there's probably going to be no way possible that you're not going to scar this up a little bit. So if you cannot fit your Sawzall in between these two here, I'm afraid to say there's going to be no other choice but to take your new treads off. Now the problem with that is if the guy has set the riser on top of this, you're probably going to have to take the risers off too. Let's hope that didn't happen. A lot of people put the risers on and then slide it in. I build them from the bottom up. I put the riser in first, then I set the tread on, and then I set the riser on top of the tread, and then I set it on. But as you can see, this guy left the nosing on with the old steps on, so I'm not exactly sure how he did that. So you have to just research and see how it is. Now I'm going to show you two different ways you could do this. 
If I was to sawzall this, I would take my sawzall, come up underneath here and cut it. And she has a lot of steps. So this is gonna be time consuming, but you're gonna have to have some patience with that. Now I have a pry bar here to simulate my sawzall and it'll slide up underneath there and it'll be you like my net my my sawzall noise anyway you'll be cutting this off right here just like that now as i said i left the tools at home so we're going to use a wrench as our hammer today Okay, now there's the nose. That's what it would look like if you cut the nose off. Now that you're at this point, I just break these nails off with my hands. I play guitar, so I have these major calluses on my fingertips. It doesn't hurt to break these off. I suggest you using a pair of uh, dikes where you can grab them and break them off. Um, if you break them off, the shank will stay inside there and you don't have to worry about um, pounding them in with a nail set or anything like that. But as you can see, now that we've cut the nose off, well, look what we got here. We have this exposed wood right here, so it's not covered up anyway. So now you're at that point where you're going to have to make a decision. Uh, and as I said before, if you don't, if you can't get your sawzall up in there, I'm sure you can get your sawzall in there. I've done it before. It's going to stink, but if you can't, your only other option is going to be to take these treads off and cut them from the top. As you see in my stair video, that's how we did it. We used it and cut it from the top. It's always better to do that first. Now, with this being exposed right here, this is what I explained to her. You're going to either have to come back with another riser and cap that off like this. And then you'll be able to put your nails back in there. And now you're good as new, but you'll have to do that all the way up. Now, a faster way of fixing this is to get a piece of trim that's very thin. Now this is a scribe mold that she used for cabinets, but they sell all kinds of trim at Home Depot and you can get it primed, you can get it just regular wood color, but the treads that they were there were, are black. So if you had the stain that was used to stain the treads, then you can go get you some just natural wood and stain them the same color. Then you would take the trim piece and slide it up underneath there and then nail it and then you would have matching right here. Now, to me, that is really going to be the only way that I think that you're going to be able to fix this problem unless you take the whole staircase apart and redo it and cut those noses from the top. Like I said, if you're not going to be able to fit the Sawzall up underneath there, you're really not going to have any choice but to pull the treads off. The only other way that I know to do this is to pull the treads off but you can see by me pulling this off, I'm not affecting this riser right here. But if your installer put these risers on top of the tread like this, then it's going to be impossible for you to pull these risers off without damaging this all here. So you're, those will have to come off and then you'll have to pull the tread off. And then after you pull the tread off, you're going to have to measure from here to the edge of the old step, find what that number is, pull it back here and make you a line across. And then you can cut it with a circular saw and you'll probably have to finish it off with a sawzall at the ends right there. Now, as you can see, I've set this on top of this. So we're in that situation where that is the case. And a lot of these, I glue mine. I glue mine and I nail them. So if you got to take mine off, you got problems because I built them to stay. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I was able to slip that out from underneath this riser right here. Uh, you're just going to be lucky if that happens to you. So now that we're here, you can see that it's flush with this riser right here. If you have to take them off, like I say, draw your line right there and then you'll have to cut them off. And then this is what it would look like. And, and then even still, you're going to be left with this raw wood right here. I think the best bet is going to just be to go ahead and find some raw wood and stain it the same color as the, as the new, new treads that he put down and just cap over that, that raw wood right there with the same stain color that you did before. Now, if this has happened to you, 
I feel sorry for you and I hate that it did happen, but I did want to give you guys a little tip so you do not run into something like this. If you went to the doctor and you broke your arm and he fixed you all up and he said that would be 50 bucks, you might look at him like, 50 bucks, that's it? That's, I don't want that doctor fixing mine because this guy went to school for many, many years to become a doctor. So he holds himself very high as far as the value that he's charging for people. I've been doing flooring for 13 years and when I first started to get customers, it was at that cheap low price, right? Because I didn't know how to, how to bid jobs. I didn't know what I was getting into. So I would give these people the price and they'd be like, mm, I'll call you back. And then you would have those other people who were like, heck yeah, that's a heck of a deal. I'll take that. They didn't know what they were getting into either. I didn't know what I was doing. So, so they were my trial and error customers. I did a lot of things on there where I made mistakes, but I also learned things as I went along. It's okay to give somebody a chance starting out, but what I would suggest doing is Googling something like, how much does it cost to have my stairs redone? And then call a couple contractors and price them out and see, call at least three and see what the prices are. And if you got one guy who's charging $50 a step, and you got another guy who's charging $100 a step, and you got another guy that's charging you $10 a step, I'll probably go with the 50 guy if you're wanting to save a little bit of money, but you want a little bit of reinsurance. And one other thing, don't be afraid to ask any questions. You guys are paying good, hard-earned money for this, so you need to have satisfaction when the job is done. Um, you know how the saying goes, you get what you pay for. I made a video about that. You can check that one out too. I hope I've covered everything in this video to help you out with the situation like this. And in the future, just be cautious. I think that wraps it up for this video. And just remember, I have a whole lot more videos coming out. We hit that thousand subscribers and we're now at 1500. So the goal to hit a thousand is over and I can relax just a little bit. Uh, we're actually working to a hundred thousand now. That's where you get the little YouTube plaque on the wall. And uh, when that happens, that'll be a momentous occasion. I have a lot of videos in the pipeline. I've already filmed three videos. It's just sitting down and editing them and getting them ready to go. So you guys hang with me and I have a whole lot more to come. I have a series called You Floor Plus and that is just where I do videos that are not related to flooring. When I first started, I did vinyl siding. I framed houses for about nine years, so I do know quite a bit about framing and also hung cabinets on the wall for five years and I've done some trim work. If it involves wood and a miter saw or a circular saw or a table saw, I'm your guy. So we'll run over those videos coming up in the future and I hope you guys like what you see. And in this new series where I'm helping people out, if you guys are running into any issues or or you have any issues that you need fixed and you're not really sure how to go about it, as I said before, I'm not an expert on everything and I don't claim to know everything. If I don't know the answer, I will do the research and I will find the answer for you. That'll save you some time and it'll also give me an idea for another video. And if you guys like the videos that I'm putting out, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And also, click the little notification bell because that's the only way YouTube is going to notify you when Uflora has put out a new video. And for the YouTube algorithm, it helps the channel grow and it helps push our videos out to more people who may not see them when you guys engage and hit the like button. I definitely appreciate all the comments you guys are leaving me, even if they're good or bad. And hey, if you don't like my videos, give it a thumbs down. You know what Brad Paisley says, the more they run my name down, the more my price goes up. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching again. And remember, take care, stay safe. Peace.